Hi guys, it's Tuesday, March 24th. Uh, we're going to bring you the Nova Fitness Workout of the Day. I'm Coach Matt. Coach Katie. Today we're going to have a 16 minute AMRAP, but before we get into that, Coach Katie's going to bring us through a warm up. Alright, today for our warm up, we're going to do an 8 minute AMRAP. So you're going to flow through a few movements for 8 minutes. So set your timer. Matt's going to show you each of our movements. First one is going to be 10 forward and backward hop. So you're going to stay on your toes, hop forward and backward, preferably over some type of line. Then Matt's going to go into his good warnings to squat. So Matt's going to put his hands behind his head. He is going to drive his hips back, come down into his squat, hips back, all the way up. Trying to keep his back nice and flat as he goes from that good morning to squat. Then Matt's going to go back to his line and he's going to do some lateral hops. Ten. Again, keeping his heels together, up on those toes. From here, Matt's going to come down to the floor and he's going to go into a hollow hold for 15 seconds. Whether his hands are over his head or his hands are at his side, he's going to keep tension, point his toes, and keep that core nice and tight. The last movement, Matt's either going to grab his jump rope or if you don't have a jump rope, just regular jumps for 30 seconds. Matt's going to do single unders or double unders. So practicing that movement of toes together, heels together for both singles and doubles. Now we're going to go and head over and see what Matt has for the workout of the day. Now that we're warmed up, we're going to have a 16 minute air ramp called Jump and Man. We're going to start off with five man makers. Going to 10 V up sit ups and then 20 double unders or penguin hops, depending on your ability level or if you have a jump rope or not. So, Katie's going to start off by demoing some of the man makers. Man makers are a multi step movement. So, I'm going to show you one rep. It's going to go like this. So, you're in a nice tight plank position. You're going to do a nice push up to the best of your ability. You're going to want to shift your weight to one side, row in, shift your weight to the other side, row in, jump to our feet, bring those dumbbells up and to the shoulders. Front squat and thruster. Bam! That's one repetition. We're going to be doing five per round. So we're going to complete that cycle five times. So if you don't mind, one more time, Katie. So we're going to be nice push up, shift weight, row in, shift weight, row in, jump to our feet, bring it up for a front squat, and thruster out. Now, I'm sure some of you might not have two dumbbells or may not dumbbells light enough to do that way. So we have a weight. An unweighted version. So Katie is in the same push-up position. She's going to do a push-up. She's going to turn and rotate her body, reach to the sky. She's going to do an additional push-up and reach and rotate to the other side. She's going to jump to her feet and then burst up into the air. So we're kind of compensating for a lot of weight with a little more explosion, like doing a real excited burpee. So remember, guys, we'll be going through five cycles of that man maker movement each round. Okay, next movement, V up sit up. So ideally, Katie would start off her V up sit up in a nice hollow position, and she would be able to reach up and meet her toes and hands in the middle. Excellent. So ideally, if you could maintain that very tight hollow position like Katie was doing, great. So there are some other scaled down options. If you need to relax at the bottom and come up creating tension with every repetition, it's a little slower, but it still trains the same muscles. If you're able to keep a decent hollow position, but you can't quite get all the way up, a partial rep is still good, you're still engaging the right muscles, you're training that core to get stronger. Or we can go do single leg, where we're reaching up, you can rest one leg on the ground even as you sit up to it. The point that we're trying to do is we're trying to lift one leg up or both legs up and pull our back off the ground simultaneously. So V up, sit ups. Last thing is the double unders and or penguin hops. So regardless of whether you do penguin hops, single unders, or double unders today, we're going to want to keep our feet in a tall, tight position. We don't want our heels coming to the ground and landing flat-footed every time we double under. So if Katie were to go through and just do a couple uh, penguin hops for us, oh, you'll notice her heel is not hitting the ground. We're barely, if ever, lightly kissing the ground at most. She's not going to land flat-footed. Oh, 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 that's rough. So a lot of times when we're first learning double unders, that's one of the harder things, uh, is keeping that heel off the ground. So whether you're doing penguin hops or double unders, say we want to focus on that. 
Another point of performance for doing penguin hops. So if you do a penguin hop, you can probably rotate to the camera this time. We want to jump high enough that we clearly are able to tap our sides two times while in the air. That's good. You can see the cage jumping high enough to really train the reflexes of her feet and lower, lower leg. Sometimes the, the penguin hop turns and kind of into a bit of a mishmash of hopping and clapping. And there's just no real distinguishing thing. So remember guys, sometimes it's a little harder. You have to slow your rounds down to do a better job. But doing that penguin hop will pay off for your jump ropes, okay? And then obviously if you want to just give a quick demo. We do single unders today, guys. We're going to 60 single unders, so three times. See you about 420 double unders. Excellent, excellent. Alright, he's going to one round in for today's live. So, 16 minutes is a fairly long time. We are not going to want to start off fast and furious out the gate. I recommend just working on quality, rhythmic pace on those man-eaters. If you could string all five in a row, unbroken each round, that'd be really good. Uh, the main things to watch out for is during the V-ups, during the double-unders, your core is going to become very fatigued. Do your best to balance and control the weight as you row in, as you shift your weight from side to side. Remember to maintain a tight abdominal. As you start to become out of breath, you're going to slouch, you're going to put a lot of pressure on your low back if you don't maintain an engaged core, okay? So, as always, shoot us uh, some messages or comment on the shirt log if you have any questions, um, need any other scale options, uh, and we'll hear from you then. Have a good workout.